Hey, math students. Um, Tia uh, commented on one of my YouTube videos on solving inequalities, wondering how to solve this inequality. So let's take a look. It says solve for n. And, I, and then I see the inequality 5 minus n is less than or equal to 17. That's what this little symbol here says, less than or equal to. I know it's less than because it points off to the left, the less than direction. And I know it's or equal to because that line underneath. So there's the less than part and there's the or equal to part. Okay. Um, so now, again, solve for n means to isolate n or get it alone on its side of the inequality. Um, and in an inequality, I like to keep the letter on the left, the letter on the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that let n over there on the left, and I'm going to move um, everything else over. So first thing I need to get rid of is this 5. This 5 is over here. Now, n is subtracting from 5, but be really careful. If I want the 5 to zero out, I'm not going to be able to add the 5. Because that minus sign, um, picture like this wasn't here. That minus sign belongs to the n, not the 5. And 5 plus 5 would give me 10. So one really important thing is a lot of students will try to add 5 there thinking, oh, that's the opposite. But really the opposite of having a 5 out there is subtracting 5. So since that's a positive 5, no symbol in front, I'm going to subtract 5. Now the rule of solving is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to jump across my inequality sign and I'm going to write minus 5 over here as well. And let's see what happens. If you have 5 and you take away 5, that just zeroes out. So there's nothing left there. But be careful. This is not just an n. This is a negative n. This is a negative n. So negative n, and I haven't done anything to flip my inequality sign, so that'll stay. And now there's the math to do. 17 minus 5 is 12. Now I'm almost done, but careful, n is not alone. n still has this negative sign hanging out. I have got to get rid of that negative sign. Now a lot of teachers will just skip this step and not show it to you, but I want to show it to you so you know where it comes from. So let me get out another color pen. So I can show you, if this is negative n and there doesn't appear to be a number out front, and that means that the invisible coefficient, as I like to call it, the number out front when there doesn't appear to be a number, is 1. A negative n is like I have negative 1 multiplying by n, um, by some number n. Um, and so if I want to get rid of a negative outside, sign out front, one way I can do it is by dividing by that negative 1 um, that's multiplying n. So that's one way I can do it. It's not the only way. Some other teachers will teach it other ways. Um, they all get you to the same place, so don't worry if this isn't the way you've seen it done before. But basically, to get rid of that negative in front of n, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 1. Now something really, really important happens. This is called negating. This is negating your, I said it was an equation, guys, but it's an inequality. This is called negating your inequality. And this is the only time that inequalities are different from solving equations. This is really the big difference here. So write this down. Make sure this is in your notes. When you negate an inequality, that means you either multiply or divide. Multiply or divide. That's negating it. By a negative number. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, that's negating your inequality. You flip the inequality sign, because you're actually going to change the relationship here between the two sides. Before I do it, I just want to prove to you that that would happen, and let's prove it without letters, because when there's letters involved, you guys feel like it's more confusing. So I bet you guys agree with me that negative 1 is less than 1. If you owe a dollar, you have less money than if you have a dollar, yeah? But imagine if I negated both sides of this. I divided both sides by negative 1. What would happen? They would both change their signs. So I would get this new relationship, 1 and negative 1. Well, if I did that, if I negated both sides, I changed both sides' signs, it would change the relationship. 1 is actually greater than negative 1. And so it's really important that when you negate um, an inequality, you flip the inequality sign. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 cancels so that my n is alone. And now, because I divided by a negative number here, I divided by a negative number, I negated my equation. And so I'm going to 
or I negated my inequality, sorry. So I'm going to flip my inequality sign. It used to say less than or equal to, it now says greater than or equal to. And I'll do this math. 12 divided by negative one is of course just negative 12. That's all that negative one does, it just changes signs. And so your final answer is actually n is greater than or equal to negative 12. And if you had to graph this on a number line, which sometimes could come up in class or on the GED, you would just have to at least make sure that negative 12 appeared somewhere on your number line. Besides that, I really don't care the rest of the numbers, as long as they're in a order so that it gets less as we go off to the left and greater as we go off to the right. And because it's greater than or equal to, I would put a closed dot. Anytime you have the or equal to, your dot is closed. And I'm gonna go off in the greater than direction, and remember we get larger as we go off to the right. Beautiful, so there's your answer in inequality form. There's your answer graphed on a number line, but they both mean the same thing, and is greater than or equal to negative 12. Wonderful, if you have any questions about this, uh, be sure to drop them in the comments, or if you have another question you want answered, um, drop it like Tia did and we'll see what I can do. All right guys, till next time.